Hey, this is Travis. This is a two-part series on BitTensor tokenomics. In this video, we're going to go over how emissions work. And then in the next one, we're going to use our emissions knowledge to get a better feel for how the market is doing right now. Now remember, at a high level, BitTensor's tokenomics mirror Bitcoin's tokenomics pretty closely. There is a maximum supply of 21 million Bitcoin, and there is also a maximum supply of 21 million BitTensor Tau. In Bitcoin, the mining reward is cut in half every four years. Tau also has a four-year halving schedule. And then in BitTensor, blocks happen around once every 12 seconds. And every block, emissions are distributed between subnet pools and participants. This is going to get complex as we're covering the entirety of emissions. So you'll need some knowledge about participants. There's a link in the description with a video that will help you get up to speed with participants. We're going to split emissions into three parts. Part one, every block, one tau is divided amongst the subnet pools. Part two, every block, a variable amount of alpha is injected into the subnet pools. And lastly, part three, Every block, one alpha per subnet is distributed to the subnet participants. Every block, one tau is emitted into the subnet pools. This is reduced by half every four years, just like Bitcoin. This one tau is split between each subnet pool. The amount of tau emitted into each subnet pool is its current price divided by the sum of all subnet prices. So if a subnet's price is currently 0 0.05, and if we add up all the subnet prices and we get a value of 2, then the amount of tau emitted into this subnet's pool in one block is 0 0.05 divided by 2, so 0 0.025 tau. To prevent abuse is actually the EMA of the price divided by the EMA of the sum of all subnet prices. EMA is just an average of prices over a time period. Using the EMA smooths prices out so emissions will be less erratic and less prone to abuse. Separately, every block up to a maximum of 1 alpha is emitted into each subnet pool. Once we know the tau emitted to the pool, we can calculate the alpha to be emitted into the pool as well by dividing the emission this block by the price. So continuing our example, the price is 0 0.05 and 0 0.025 is being emitted into the pool. Divide those and you get 0.5 alpha to be emitted into the pool. So to summarize parts 1 and 2, both tau and alpha are injected into the subnet pools. This dual injection keeps prices relatively stable during emissions and increases the pool's liquidity every block. Now let's look at the alpha emitted to participants. Each subnet has a maximum supply of 21 million alpha, just like Bitcoin but subnet alpha tokens have a quicker halving schedule every two to three years. So right now, up to a maximum of one alpha is emitted to participants. This amount is reduced with each individual subnet's halving. Of this one alpha per subnet, 18% is awarded to the subnet owner, 41% to miners, and the last 41% is split between validators and their stakers. The 41% miner rewards are given to miners based on how well they perform their subnet's task as determined by the subnet owner. The 18% that a subnet owner gets is a flat rate paid in the subnet's alpha token. We see some subnet owners doing interesting things like burning or buybacks to try to maintain the price of their subnet's alpha token. Remember, if the value of the subnet's output increases, we'll see the value of the subnet's alpha token increase and the subnet owners take along with it. Now let's dig a bit deeper into the validator portion. The 41% validator awards are given to validators based on their V-Trust. You can think of V-Trust as how reliable a validator is. Validators with high V-Trust have high uptime and are quick to update their machines when subnet owners update their subnet's code. They also properly check miners in the way the subnet owners say they should. See my Yuma consensus video for how V-Trust works in a little bit more detail. So for staker rewards, the 41% of the 1 alpha awarded to validators is split between all the validators based on their stake weight, which combines their tau with their alpha in each subnet. Remember that you can stake in two ways. You can stake tau on the root subnet, or you can stake alpha on any other subnet. 
One staked alpha in a subnet counts for approximately five staked tau to root when calculating the weight for a particular subnet. So alpha in a subnet is worth more than a generally staked tau, but alpha only receives emissions from one subnet, whereas staked tau on root receives a small portion of all subnet emissions. And then the other thing to be aware of here is the root proportion. This number is variable depending on how many days have passed since the dynamic tau bit tensor upgrade. This graph shows the proportion of emissions that go to alpha stakers and root stakers. You can see that over time more emissions flow to alpha stakers and less emissions go to tau or root stakers. At the time this video was made, we are about here in the graph. If you're watching in a few months, we might be here. So the amount stakers receive depends on the vTrust performance of the chosen validator, along with the stake weight of the validator, and the current root proportion. Stakers receive a proportional amount of emissions based on how much they're staking. For alpha stakers, they receive alpha. But for root stakers, the alpha emission is sold and converted to tau. This is why we see a gentle price decline over time on inactive subnets. The protocol is automatically selling root stakers as alpha emissions for tau. So if we compare BitTensor's tokenomics with Bitcoin's tokenomics, it looks fairly similar. They share a 21 million supply and four year halvings. Let's also compare Bitcoin with subnet alpha tokens. There's a 21 million supply for both of them, whereas alpha tokens have a slightly quicker halvening schedule at two to three years. Valuation methods for alpha will likely look at the subnet's APY, which is affected by the root proportion as described in this video. Another thing to consider with valuation is how many halvings the subnet has had. At the time of this video, we've had no subnets go through a halving yet. One more thing to consider is how halvings affect emissions. Remember, there's two types of halvings in BitTensor. The tau halving schedule, which affects subnet pool emissions, and alpha halvings, which affect emissions going to participants. One of my opinions is that I believe that subnet prices will go down over the long run, simply due to the registration of new subnets that are going to compete for emissions. This isn't to say that all subnet prices will go down, just the average. But it is offset by the high APY we see in subnets. I also think that when valuing a subnet, it's important to know how old the subnet is so that I can gauge where it is in its emission cycle. But in addition, I want teams to be doxed. I want to understand the incentive mechanism. I want to understand the total addressable market and more. I condense this information into five minutes in my subnet showcase series, link in the description. Also remember this is part one of the tokenomic series. In part two, we look at graphs and more analysis.